What I'm saying when I'm talking about going into a maintenance period is having more than a week off. It's normal to have four or five days off to have a little mini break. But if you're having any more than a week off for a variety of reasons, such as uh, it's winter or you're going into a bit, of a bit of an off season or you're busy at work and you're not gonna be able to train as much for let's say a month. Maybe you've got big things going on in your life. You're looking to buy a new property and, or you're moving houses or you've got big changes going on in life and you're not gonna be able to commit as much time to training. These are the types of situations I'm talking about where it's useful to go into a maintenance period. The reason why it pains me so much when I see riders having these big periods of detraining is that I know how easy it can be to maintain fitness. Just before I get into the nitty gritty details, I wanna cover why you would want to maintain your fitness because there are a few aspects to it. Obviously the main one is that if you put in work in to build fitness, you don't wanna just lose it all in <laughs> a couple of weeks to, to a month. Like that's very, that's a waste. That's a waste of time and effort. But in my mind and also in a lot of the research, one of the other main reasons why you don't want to go through a detraining period is that it limits the level you can reach in your next training blocks and in your next seasons. So I've got this study here, which is looking at this idea of reaching PB. So it's a study looking at elite swimmers. This study grouped swimmers into two groups, a group that achieved a personal best in the current season, and also a group who didn't achieve a personal best in the current season. Then they went back and looked at, well, how did they progress from the end of the previous season through their off season to the start of the current season? and then looking at how they hit their PBs. And what they found is that the group who hit their PBs actually came out of the off season at a higher level. So the authors in this study even noted that even though the seasonal improvements of the group that detrained were slightly higher than those that did better training in the off season, their low initial level apparently prevented them from breaking their personal records. So what we can learn from this is that if you want to improve year on year or season on season and see a long-term progression, you need to avoid these detraining periods. So even if you're having a period of time, a month, a couple of months where you're not solely focused on training, you need to take the advice in this video and do some of this maintenance work so that when you do start training again, you're not starting from that low level that we saw in those swimmers. If you do want to maintain your fitness through one of these periods, what's the minimum amount of work you can put in to do so? Most of these answers are coming from this research study. The first thing you can manipulate is your training frequency. How many times do you need to train per week? Thankfully, this is where you can make the biggest cuts. So we're looking at here, if you maintain the intensity, which I will get onto in a bit, you can likely cut your training frequency to two times per week. If you consistently train more than 10 hours per week, then three rides per week might be more ideal for maintenance. But that's really not much to force yourself, even if you're busy with life doing other things, to force yourself to get on the bike twice per week, maybe three times per week, I think is achievable for most people. Final tip in terms of the frequency is just try and spread these out per week. So if you say to yourself, cool, I'm gonna get on the bike two times per week and do a session, Try and do one maybe uh, Monday and Thursday or Tuesday and Friday. You wanna spread out that training dose evenly throughout the week. Next thing you can manipulate is your volume. How many hours a week do you need to be training? So moderate cuts can be made here. This isn't like the frequency where you can go from riding six times a week to riding two times per week. In terms of the volume, you're gonna use a 50% rule. So take your regular training volume that you do when you're specifically training Let's say, for example, that you, you usually train 12 hours a week. You can cut this in half and likely maintain most of your muscular endurance and your VO2 max, so your five minute power. Couple of little extra details in terms of the volume to make it a little bit more specific. If you're really concerned about your fitness over a longer road race, so above two hours, so two to four hours, you might wanna cut this back a little less. You might wanna only cut this back by a third, so about 33%. If you're looking to maintain some of those longer endurance, longer aerobic style um, aspects of your fitness, don't cut this back as much. Similarly, if you're not too worried about your fitness over two hours and you kind of just train for crits, you can cut back even further. So you can cut this by two thirds, which means if you usually train a 12 hour week, you can maintain most of your fitness relevant to races under an hour just by training four hours a week. So keep that in mind. But in general, just to keep it simple, Use a 50% rule in terms of reducing your training volume for a maintenance period. 
And then the final thing that you can adjust, which is probably the most important, is the intensity of the training you're gonna be doing. This is the one where you can't make too many cuts because it's actually the high intensity training that does the most for your fitness maintenance. The authors in this study noted that it was quite interesting in some of the research they were looking at in this review study, they were getting people to go out six times per week for 40 minutes to do endurance training, to do sort of zone two aerobic rides, and they were seeing next to no um, maintenance in terms of their five minute power, so VO2 max, or in terms of their muscular endurance, in term, um, which was a 40 minute all out time trial. So that's why it is really important when you are doing these maintenance periods that you do include intense training each week. So what is considered intensity? Uh, this is anything generally sweet spot and above is considered an intense session. So you are looking to include this intense work twice per week this is what is driving your fitness maintenance. All right, let's drill into this even more. What does this look like in terms of an actual training week throughout the maintenance period? Keep in mind that this doesn't need to be structured. You could be doing uh, group rides or club rides to form one of your intense sessions per week. So if we're building out a training week, there are two specific workouts that I've seen used regularly in the research. The first one, is six five minute efforts at FTP. It's done in this study by Runnerstad. Some of you might recognize that name. That's the guy that invented the, the 30 15 intervals, the VO2 max session. They took two groups. One of them did just endurance training. One of them did endurance training with uh, six five minute efforts at FTP throughout the off season. They then measured their performance after a training block when they started training again. And the group that did the six by five throughout their off season just once per week saw much greater improvement when they started training uh, throughout that next training block when they were back in their season again. So the first workout I would suggest if we're building a week is six by five at FTP. Just keep in mind as well with these sessions is because they're only a fitness maintenance session, they don't need to be overloaded. So you can just do the same session week on week on week on week, six by five, six by five, six by five. You don't need to be looking to push up the power each week or do more reps. You're literally just doing that workout to get that stimulus on your energy systems to maintain them. So then the other session in the week that I would suggest doing, again, this is sort of piecing together different bits of research, is something that's a bit higher intensity. So this is uh, another research study which looked at a type of session throughout a transition period, so throughout sort of an off season, and then looking at how did athletes respond when they started training again. And in this session, they did uh, nine 30 second efforts. So this that blocked into sets of three. So three 30 second efforts. In the study, they said maximal. Um, I think sort of near maximal is fine. Sort of, it's very hard to define what a, you know, a maximal 30 second effort is. I mean, in my mind, a session with nine pu actually maximal 30 second efforts would be something that you would do in season as a track rider. So I think in this case, sort of, very hard 30 second efforts uh, near maximal is good enough. But even that's not that hard of a session to do once a week as well. So piecing these together, putting all this together, what does an actual week look like? Hey guys, a good part of the video is coming up where I actually detail an entire training week. But just a quick message as I edit this video, I actually have some availability that's come up with my coaching. I recently quit my second job, I'm now coaching full time. So I have some availability with my one-to-one -one private coaching coaching link is down below. If you might be interested in something like that, have a read to the website, see what's involved with the coaching packages and get in touch. If you are interested, I am looking to coach more riders just like you guys. So have a look at that if you're interested. So this is an example week here in a maintenance period if you would usually train 12 hours per week. So in terms of the overall volume, you can see here using the 50% rule, we've got a six hour week. We've also got the workout spread evenly across the week. And the efforts we're doing, we've got the 30 second efforts on the Tuesday, the nine by 30 second efforts. On the Thursday, we've got our five minute FTP repeats. And then a longer ride on the Saturday, two and a half hours just endurance to maintain some of that more longer um, aerobic muscular endurance. That is a very achievable week. If you usually train 12 hours a week, I would say finding a way to get that done should be possible. And that's gonna go a very long way in maintaining your fitness. Let's look at another week. If you usually train eight hours per week, 
this is what your week would look like. So again, using the 50% rule, you can see overall duration on the left-hand side, four hours total for the week. And then we've just got the two intense workouts that I've pulled from the research there. So rest day, Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday, you're gonna go and do your 30 second high intensity efforts. You're then gonna have two rest days on Thursday, Friday. Saturday, you're gonna go out and do your five minute FTP repeats. That's your week, that's it. Uh, again, that is very achievable. So that is all for this video. Maybe a bit of a wake up call for some of you to get out, hit those intense sessions during your maintenance period and just keep those energy systems ticking over. It'll do you wonders when you get back into your training. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Catch you in the next one.